It's James at Reedish Motorsport. Thanks for bringing your M3 to us for the Comrade Bearing process. I'm going to explain a little bit about that work now and uh, show you the plastic gauge measuring process, which is a really important part of the bearing change. But first of all, you're probably wondering how the car gets this condition, because as you can see, it's a lot more disassembled than when you first brought it in, and that's because we have to take off under trays, reinforcement plates, disconnect your wishbones from your subframe, and then remove your subframe and steering rack assembly in one piece, place that safely on the ground, whilst we then install our special tool subframe, which is one we bought many years ago, and we cut the middle section out of it. So that gives us a left-hand side and a right-hand side special tool subframe, which uh, allows us to let the engine sit on engine mounts on a subframe, which loads its weight into the chassis legs like it would do normally. And the beauty about that is we don't have to hang or swing the engine from above with those beams. And uh, there's also plenty of room to get the sumps off of the engine and then later back on, and especially safe whilst we're working at it, turning it at the crankshaft here to get the comrades into each correct position. And then once the sump is off, we take our two more oil pipes off, which come out of these pumps here. And then we get our first look at inside of the engine where the crankshaft and comrades are. Just in case you weren't aware, the crankshaft is the main rotating heart of the engine. It lives in the lower part of the engine known as the engine block. So it fits from the front line of the engine block there, goes through to the back line of the engine block there. And then there's your flywheel, which bolts to the back of the crankshaft. And then there's your manual gearbox going on towards the middle of the vehicle. And wrapping around the crankshaft, you've got the items known as com rods. Let's take this one here for an example. Uh, its official name is connecting rods because it does connect things together. It connects the pistons up there to the crankshaft down here. Up there, you can just see the underside of one of the pistons. And then that silver item going through is the gudgeon pin, which goes through to connect the piston to the small end of the comrade. Down here, it's nicknamed the big end of the comrade, and this is where the comrade bearings are stored. So comrade bearings are semi-circular. Just going to show you what um, sort of size they are, give you an idea of um, them. So there's two each cylinder. So another one sits on this side opposing it, and then that makes a full circle bearing. And even though comrades look like one piece, they're actually made up of two pieces. So there's an invisible join line just here in between those match numbers. And the upper part is known as the comrade, and this lower part here is called the cap. Those two items are held together with comrade bolts, which are these items here. You can see those are brand new ones, nice shiny gray material. They're genuine BMW, very special stretch bolt, which has to be torqued in a special cycle um, to achieve full tensile strength. So that's six newton meters, 20 newton meters, and then a 130 degree turn. That's cycle one. Then you release the bolt and then carry out that again, cycle two. Then you release the bolt and carry out that again, cycle three. And then that's achieved full tensile strength. So then we paint mark the heads with a bright color, which is yellow in this case, and then work our way along the engine towards the end. So we start at the front up here and we work our way towards the end, but it's not just the bolts we're replacing. That's a prerequisite of the bearing replacement, but it's the bearings that we're here to actually replace. But it's not just a case of taking them out and putting the new ones in. You have to, as part of BMW's instructions, carry out something called plastic age measuring, which is something we've done on every engine we've ever installed Comrade bearings on. And that's what we're going to show you an example of here. Plastic age is this red stuff here. It's a piece of plastic effectively. We'll go into that in more detail shortly. But this one is obviously part way through the uh, bearing change, so it looks different, and that's because we've got the bolts and the cap and the bearing removed, and then you get access to this part of the crank, which is the crankshaft journal. It's a highly polished and precision machine part of the crank, which has to say clean and free from debris and scratches, and that's because the Comrade bearings are actually rotating around that crankshaft journal, but they never touch it. Instead, they float on a film of oil, and that film of oil is called a hydrodynamic wedge. And that film of oil is critical to the health of the bearing, the crankshaft, the comrades, and therefore the entire engine. So that film of oil is so small that the human eye cannot see it. That's why you have to measure that film of oil with something called plastic gauge, which is made in the UK. Um, BMW actually sell that through their parts department under a special part number. It's classified as a special tool. If I just zoom in and show you one half of the bearing that's already fitted in this picture, so just between my fingers there is the thickness of one of the new Comrod bearings, which is already installed in the Comrod. The Comrods always stay in the engine. It's just the cap that comes off to be able to change those. And it comes, it goes around the back of the journal and comes out just down there in the underside of the Comrod. And then the other half will go on this side with the cap and the bolts later on. So to measure the clearance, you uh, have to use, like I say, this plastic gauge. I'm gonna show you what it looks like when it's brand new. It comes from BMW in a packet. They're all exactly the same length. 
very flexible and soft, designed for measuring bearing clearances, so it doesn't harm anything. You take a small section of that, about the width of the bearing, you install that on the journal, and then you install the new bearing set um, and the cap and the bolts, and you carry out the torque process to squash that piece of plastic. That mimics real world working conditions. Then you undo the cap, the bolts, and take the bearing off and you look at that what was a tiny piece of plastic and you see how far it's been squashed or spread and you use then a uh, plastic gauge measuring card which is this item here to work out what size it is so you've got lots of red blocks on this the uh, tighter clearances at the top looser clearances at the bottom these numbers all relate to a measurement in millimeter value and the bmw tolerance for the s65 engine is 0.027 to 0.06 seven six of a millimeter and um, this one is matching up at 0 0.05 which is excellent that's right in the middle range so we're very happy with that that's very consistent and yours have been uh, all at 0 0.05 which is just great news um, and that's what we come to expect when using the ACL race bearings. This is also what we call the Redish Custom Mix Set, which is where we use a H and a HX blend of bearings. We do that for two reasons. One, to be able to fine tune bearing clearances if we have to, if we come across an area that's slightly worn or um, had a replacement comrade for some other reason in its life, or uh, if it's just unlucky in what we call a tolerant stack engine. Now we didn't need to do with that in your engine, which is great news. It's very healthy under here. Um, and the second reason we do it is to be able to give a minute amount more oil clearance to this area. It's a bit of a worldwide known fact that the S65 and the S85 engines have a very tight oil clearance. So um, commonly the BMW bearings give around about 0.038, around about that sort of figure. Um, and, uh, and that's quite on the tight side. And uh, by using um, a H and a HX blend of bearings from ACL Race, which is recognized on their website as a, a sensible approach, you are able to give a benefit, a minute amount more oil clearance. Still sticking with 10W60 engine oil and still well under the maximum permissible limit, which is 0.076. Um, so that's a little bit of explanation about what we use, why we use and how we do it. Um, so that's been good, a good success. And it's not just this one that we've measured. Even though we've only videoed this one, we measure every single one. We just don't video all of them because otherwise it would be very long and quite a repetitive video. But all the data that we've gathered, the measurement data from the Commonwealth bearing clearances on all the other cylinders and the torque values from the bolts, we record that on a spreadsheet as we go along. So we'll print a copy of that off for your car records at the end of the process. Now we'll get that piece of plastic gauge cleaned off like we've cleaned off from all the others, then lubricate that journal for the last time, install the bearing half and the cap and the bolts, carry out the torque procedure, paint mark the heads yellow, and then that's all of them done. Then we need to rebuild the engine in reverse order. So that will be new O-rings in the oil pipes just in here. Then we'll be cleaning the sump and engine block perimeters, installing a genuine BMW sump gasket. And once the engine is oil tight, we'll be filling with Castrol 1060 M power engine oil and a genuine BMW oil filter kit. And then when it's more mechanically complete with your subframe and steering rack assembly back on, we'll fill the steering system with CHF 11S steering fluid and also the high, high pressure uh, pipes, which go onto the steering rack over here on the right hand side, we'll get new ceiling rings. Then we'll be able to start the engine for the first time. We'll keep the uh, car up in the air on the lift like it is now. We'll be underneath it, monitoring it, checking it, making sure everything's fine for the first 20 minutes or so whilst it's warming up to temperature. And when it has reached the correct temperature, then we'll request a fresh oil level reading from the iDrive system. And when we're happy the oil level is correct, then we'll go out and do our standard 12 mile road test that we do on all vehicles that have been with us for Comrod bearing work. So also in this video, you can see the new engine mounts that we've installed. Here's the one for the left-hand side of the engine and there's the one for the right-hand side of the engine. I thought you might like to also see the old parts that we've taken out, as in the old Comrod bearings, because they were uh, quite well worn. So you did this, I think, absolutely at the right time. We've got um, the original bearings all laid out here. As soon as they come out of the engine, we use a Sharpie pen to identify them with a number. That gives a position point, so uh, position one to position eight. And then because there's two bearings per cylinder, we further identify them with a letter. So L means lower, it's in the bottom of the engine. U means upper, it's in the top of the engine. And these are the original bearings, um, so they've never been done before. We can tell that because there's a part number stamped on the back of them from BMW. And it says 088089, so that's the first generation of bearings used in the F65 engine from 2007 to about spring 2010. They're made up of copper and lead material and the um, sort of two stages of wear that we're seeing here are quite noticeable. So if we take, um, let's probably say three lower, 
is probably the best bearing out of all of them. You've got striation, rotational lines, but in general it's quite an original colour, it's a dark grey colour. Um, and then you've got sort of a second stage wear going on, let's say uh, two lower for example, there's that green patch, more of a light green olive colour, which is where the grey matter material has been worn away and that um, olive green colouring that you're seeing on these bearings, that is the lead content which has been exposed in the bearings. And then when you wear through that lead content, you then start to expose copper, which is clearly a copper colour. And that copper is the last sacrificial layer before the bearing starts delaminating or breaking up. And you were actually quite close to that on some of these bearings. Certainly cylinder four and cylinder six were badly worn with serious amounts of copper which means there's material loss which has happened on the bearing. So you uh, enlarge the clearances minutely with no knowledge of that because how would anybody know when these bearings are inside the engine, you can't see what's going on. Um, and you risk obviously little bits and sections of them delaminating. Now that sounds uh, sort of uh, elaborate, but it genuinely does happen. We see that far more than we should do. And, uh, and little craters appear in the bearing where the, where the copper sort of just comes off of the backing plate of the metal. The other thing you've got going on is the heat soak effect. So if you look at the back edge of the bearings up here, we've lined them up as best as possible. Uh, and um, look at these ones down here, cylinder four upper and cylinder six, and even slightly seven, they've slightly contracted. So they're not in line down here, they're slightly narrower, which matches with the fact that they've seen a significant amount of heat, which is something that does happen. That's sort of another stage that these bearings go through, as well as wear on the actual material. They do overlies, they go out of round, uh, they put more stress and contact points on the sort of the join side, which then has more risk of damaging crankshaft journals. There's, um, there's a whole number of ways that these engines fail and your engine was uh, significantly heading that way. So you've done the absolutely right thing at 68,000 miles, never been done before, these are the original bearings, you've done the right thing at 68 to reduce that risk massively, get these bearings out of the engine, put in the new set of bearings, the arguably better bearings, the ACL Race, which are the Reedish Custom Mix set with the HHX blend, and, um, and then treat that as a uh, sort of a new lease of life where you don't have to worry about that for the bearing anytime soon. Now it's quite commonplace that some engines, depending on how they are driven, if they're a tolerant stack engine, or just um, how long they go on to live, may need the bearings done more than once in the car's lifetime. If you think of yours needing done at 68, uh, it could well need doing again or want to be done again before the car sort of expires at whatever mileage the car finishes its life, which might be another 20, 30 years in the future. It's just something that BMW seems to have forgot to tell people that these bearings, um, even though they shouldn't be a consumable, they almost have to be treated as a consumable and a, not exactly a service item, but something that's done um, unusually regular compared to maybe other manufacturers' engines. But there we go, that's a little bit of a talk and uh, ex uh, show you about the old bearings that we've taken out of your engine. Hopefully you find that video informative and goes to show what goes on during a Reedish Motorsport Comrod bearing process. Um, as part of this work, we'll give you six nice pieces of evidence to show that we've done the, carried out the bearings in a meticulous fashion here at Reedish Motorsport. So that's this video that you're watching now. Also a set of digital pictures which show key stages of the repair. Plus the old parts we'll pass back to you in a Reedish Motorsport presentation box. And then paperwork wise, we'll be giving you the Comrod bearing data sheet uh, also a professionally printed invoice and if your service book is available we'll stamp that with the Reedish Motorsport Comrod Baron stamp as well. So I just want to thank you very much for choosing us out of many specialists you probably could have gone to. We really do appreciate your business and taking the time to travel to us as well. Please feel free to share this video. We do really enjoy documenting the process just as much as doing the work. We put a lot of effort into the video in the pictures. So feel free to share this if you've got any friends or family um, that would like to see it or if you're on any Facebook groups, WhatsApp groups, forums, you've got our permission to use the video how you wish. And uh, as soon as the car is complete and ready for collection, we'll give you a call to let you know. Thank you.